think that was a pep talk to myself actually yeah how many cushions is too many cushions you know how many just asking for a friend <laughs> hey team how are you i hope that you're tickety boo thank you for joining me again today I am going to do a little sit down chatty vlog with you, show you what I've been up to and share a few projects with you. I hope that you've been tickety boo and I hope wherever you are in the world that you are safe. At the moment in the UK there is a huge amount of unrest, so much so that Malaysia, Nigeria and Australia have said either do not travel or exercise extreme caution there have been riots all of it hugely founded in racism islamophobia and in the uk any person of color right now is at risk hence why other countries have said to exercise the caution I'm not gonna lie this morning my head was spinning a little bit with it all thinking what do I need to do to keep my family safe and it's really really easy to slip into that fear because it's only a small amount of people undertaking these acts of violence but these acts of violence are terrifying I'm speaking about it because it's I want people to be aware I want people to do their due diligence and keep themselves safe and their families safe. There's groups of people doing good and there's a lot of figures there on social media calling this out. There's hope, that's what I'm saying, there's hope. Originally today I was gonna have a full energy sit down, chat about my subscription, my membership and Actually, I just feel really reflective and I want to retreat, but I know that hiding away right now is not gonna serve my family, it's not gonna serve my community. And ultimately, the way that I can keep my family and my community safe is to show up for them and spread that light. So here we are, let's do that. I shared with you bag one and bag two last week and you all absolutely love it thank you so so much for your responses and your encouragement and your support i am <laughs> beyond grateful beyond thankful it feels good and i'm excited to meet you all when we have our video calls about the bag subscription now there have been questions about the subscription and wanting to know more information and as i said i wanted to sit down and do a chat about it and i realized that i missed i missed a trick on the last question on the last vlog i should have asked you what questions you have because then i will do a question and answer segment when i talk about the subscription details and then i can be sure that you've got all the information that so please comment below with your questions regarding the subscription and I will be sure to answer every single one that I get on YouTube as my way of just saying thank you so, so much for your support. One of my other thoughts for YouTube as well was to give a YouTube exclusive discount on everything that will be dropping on the 15th of August 2024. Not only will I have my mini home collection, but I will also have my early signups for my subscription squad. So what do you need to know? What do you want to know? Obviously, I'm going to give all of the basics. Just help me out. Ask the questions so that when it comes to recording, I know exactly what you need to know. <sighs> I will say I've been feeling a little bit of agitation slash anxiety, world events, local events, personal life, and just navigating 
motherhood it's been a lot it has been a lot and that's also feeding in just wanting to retreat and reflect so what better way than to sit with you and just chat about some of these projects and I have been feeling anxious it's starting to kick in now the nervous bubble nervous bubbles for the granny square day when everything goes out <sighs> Brad and I have set me a goal a financial goal for launch day let me know do you want to hear about the finance side of it like what my goals are I could share like what my income is and my sales are for each drop and then um I could share like what I'm going to focus on to try and increase those numbers and what changes I'll be making so I know that quite a few of you would love to be designers that you already are designers maybe um it would just be of interest to you so if you want to see if you want to see a video on finances then please give this um video a thumbs up like and then i will be able to see from there how many people are interested in seeing that sort of content and then another realization that i had when i posted is that because i've shared bag one and two and there's going to be six bags if i share any more bags at this point i will take away the element of like anticipation and exact excitement because you will have seen so far in advance so i need to now not share obviously you've seen sneak peeks of bag three but you've not seen it finished so i'm not going to be sharing any more on those bags other than like the early sneak peeks you know where it's just a few squares just so you might get a bit of an idea but definitely definitely not sharing the finished item until much closer to sign ups for that particular month and then i was like oh so what projects am i going to share with you <laughs> it just so happens because of the anxiety and those like nervous bubbles i've been feeling that i've been working on a granny square project of course like what else do i do in these times and i decided that i wanted to make some granny square cushions for my sofa with no pressure or deadlines or anything like that so let me show you the first one that is like 98 hmm. let's go with 90 hmm. 85% complete. Should we do the reveal thing? Because it's like a bit of a tradition now, isn't it? Okay. Three, two, one. Ta-da! This is my latest project. It's a really big granny square cushion. And I will say that this is the most simple of designs but I love it, it's so effective, it's been so lovely to work on and I want to make more. This is a 50 centimeter cushion pad, I'm not sure that is in inches. So it's about 20 inches, 50 centimeters, 20 inches. And I actually dove into my stash of granny squares. To put this cushion together I started it one morning and by the afternoon the next day it was basically at the point that it's at now I say that it is like what did we agree 85% done because I haven't finished the closure now what I've decided to go with is these um, Thai a bow type thing and so I've made one and then I actually <laughs> used the if I'm not finding my hair it's Teddy's hair or Albie's like not sure that black was the best choice to do for this room I probably should have gone with something else but it's one of the colours I have the most of when it comes to joining. 
tempted to take it apart and do a different joining colour that's lighter. But anyway, <laughs> I've used stitch markers just to attach these on to check that they were the right length and it was going to work. And then I toyed with the idea of doing ties at every second granny square. But there's seven, so it was going to leave a bit of a gape. So then I was like, what if I do every two and then like the centre like this? So it'd be these two and then this one, this one, and then these two. But then I was like, for the sake of it, I will just make one on every granny square. I felt like these were going to take forever, but nah, they really don't. So I have made a chunk of these. I'm partway through this one. Made a load of them. And what I'm going to do is use these two ends to attach it onto the cushion and then I will be able to tie the bows and close the cushion and then that way it will be easy enough for me to pop it or the cushion pad. Let's be honest, if something gets spilled on it, the cushion pad's also going to need clean washing, cleaning. I try not to let Teddy eat on the sofa, but sometimes he just likes to chill in the corner and watch a little something sometimes i just want those five minutes but then when you come back and you see the utter destruction you question your life choices <laughs> i can't be the only mama that feels that way <sighs> and i know i know i can hear you all already but what about the ends babes i'm about to tell you what i've done with the ends let me show you absolutely nothing not a single thing has been done for these ends. I haven't woven in a single one. And also, I'm not going to. Nobody's going to know. I have gone through, pulled them all through to the back, and then I've made sure that like the center is cinched because I do chain three to start. I don't, do, I don't like the magic loop. I don't really know how to do it properly. Maybe that's why I don't like it. So I like my centers to look quite quite close um so like quite small but once they're tucked in I don't think you can tell I'm not going to weave the ends in but because I haven't woven in a single end I could take this apart and I could join it in a different color which I may or may not do but because I want to make multiple of these that is also another option I'd like to make an even bigger one I think I mentioned before that in this area here we've got a corner sofa so this is the armrest but then we have our windowsill just here and just out of shot that metal tang is our radiator and sometimes when teddy is just doing the most on this sofa he will catch himself on it and one particular time he really did do himself some damage so we always put a load of cushions there as like a bit of a buffer and we have some small cushions that came with the sofa that I was going to cover in crochet. But now I just want to go big. This cushion pad is from Ikea. And, oh, it's got the measurements on it. 20 centimetres, 20 centimetres, 50 centimetres is 20 inches. I'd like to go bigger for the next one. Let me put it back together and show you it one more time. I have one confession with this. <laughs> when I was doing the join as you go, I, for some reason I didn't go all the way up to the top. So I have a little bit there that I need to sort out. This is a cushion I have made for my sofa. I've used double knit acrylic yarn. I made a whole stack of two round granny squares, which I have in my stash at all times. And I joined it using the continuous join as you go method. If you want to learn how to do that, I will link my video tutorial below and also a link to my granny square guide. You can get the free version or you can choose to pay the small amount on my website and then you can purchase it. Also, you get it free with any granny square pattern that I sell. And it will teach you how to do the continuous join as you go, which means there's no sewing because I crocheted the whole thing together. 
And because I've basically finished that, but I haven't finished it, but you know what I mean? It's basically finished. I needed a bit more granny square action. I've gone back to another cushion that I started. I like to start with the projects for a teeny weeny little cushion cover. This is the little cushion. And does it have the size on here? No. I think this was like, 10 centimeters or something like for comparison but how cute are they all gonna look shall we do the should we do the oh no i need to be like this wait i have gone with the two round granny squares using join as you go i am going to pull all of the ends through to the back now and I think I'm going to do the same closure because I wasn't actually sure beforehand. But I think there was a couple reasons why I stalled on this uh, project because basically I wasn't sure how I wanted to progress with it. And I'm still not 100% sure on that one. Yeah, so I put it to one side. Also, this one isn't very portable because... Uh, rather than pick out scraps and make these little granny squares, I've just been doing it from my main stash and obviously taking my main stash with me whenever we nip out is, isn't really the one. So yeah, this one I can only work on when I've got access to my full stash, which thinking about it, I could just rectify that by taking a bag of scraps out with me. Well, what do you know? Fix my own problem. What I'm currently doing is inserting my crochet hook and I am using it to hook my ends and just pull them through to the back and then I will work my whole way across and this is one of my top tips when it comes to weaving in your ends. If you pull them all through to the back then you only have one side that you need to work on to weave the ends in. If you choose to weave your ends in you might decide to just tuck them in and leave them. And I'm not gonna judge you. If you don't enjoy doing them, then don't make yourself do it. Doesn't mean the project's not complete. I think that was a pep talk to myself actually. Yeah. I just thought this would look real cute, um, but because of the ends, that is why I decided to make this one smaller. Having said that, if I don't, take care of all the ends there's no reason why i can't go back and make a bigger one how many cushions is too many cushions you know how many just asking for a friend <laughs> wow it's gone dark not sure that's any better i definitely need to invest in some lights for down here so yeah, these are the projects that I have been reaching for the last few days. I wanted some like mindless granny square action where I didn't really need to think. And it has definitely been that and it's been great. Also, I have an update to show you on my nephew's blanket. So let me grab that now. And again, I don't think any of you watch this, but if you do, I'm about to show Carter's blanket. So please look away so you don't spoil it for yourself. Now, on Carter's blanket, I cannot get away with just tucking in the ends and gifting it. And if I'm honest, I did get in my head with weaving in the ends on this one, because I was like, all the granny squares are basically the same color and I still have all these ends to deal with. Not realizing or not taking into account that there are less ends because I haven't changed colors. I actually got all of the ends woven in, in about 90 minutes whilst Teddy was doing some playing and a little bit of help from Brad keeping him entertained. Three, two, one. Ooh. Apologies, it has gotten really dark outside and I am aware that I need to invest in some studio lighting for down here so that I can continue my recording throughout the winter months. Do you love it? I do really like it. I think she's really gonna be my sister-in-law, the recipient. 
it's technically my nephew, but you know, it's my sister-in-law. I think she's going to love it. So this is my arrival blanket. <laughs> blanket. This is my arrival blanket pattern. I designed and made this for my own son and I have made many versions since. And this is now Carter's version. I want to say a huge thank you to Wool Warehouse because they actually kindly gifted this yarn. It's their Yarn Smith yarn and it's their double knit range. And they didn't ask, like there was no stipulations. I didn't have to share about it or anything like that. But I do want to share about it because actually I really like this yarn and I'd love to put in another order just to top up my own stash. It's double knit acrylic. They've got a bazillion shades of yarn and that's exactly what you need when it comes to granny square projects. And what I decided to do with the colors that my sister-in-law picked is to just have a little smattering of color, just tiny little pops. And shout out for Brad for helping me to settle on this because it really has it looks amazing. I will try and put footage in of the first version that I made. I don't like it. I just don't like it. And I just felt that it was not, it wasn't right. And so I've actually remade this. And there are 13 rows of squares and 12 of those rows have got a different colour centre at some point. So every row bar one has a little bit of colour in it. And that blank row is actually where the name's going to go anyway. And then just to pull it together, I've used my signature, my signature border and I have used the colours and I've just put them all around the edge so that it just brings it all together in a really cohesive way. On Teddy's blanket, I used loads of different colors because that's what was in the blanket. And on this one, I've just used four. This color is very close to the joining color. All that is left to do on that is to add the name and then I can gift it. And I will say it's the guilt is starting to get to me now because Carter was born in May and about a week after it was, I'd made the blanket about two weeks before he was born it was done and I just either needed to commit to weaving in the ends or ripping it down I decided to frog and then started remaking but I've had to keep pausing it so that I can work on deadline items and that's a little bit of the juggle of your hobby being your business like I've had to prioritize the, the projects that are going to pay but also I've kind of rationalized it that we've been having pretty warm weather so we might not need this I'm really impressed with the yarn really really happy with it it works up really nicely it's not got too much stretch in it I'm not keen on double knit yarns that give a lot of stretch and a lot of give so it holds its shape really well Obviously, I've not washed it, so I'm not sure how it would hold up in a wash. And this is the first project I've used. So I don't know how it wears, like, does it pill or, like, I don't know any, any of that yet. But so far, so good. It's really nice to work with. It worked up fast. Um, There wasn't any knots in the yarn. You know, when you get yarn balls and there's knots in them, there was none of that. So I'm really pleased with it. And I definitely want some more. I would like to order a quantity i've not decided on the color but once i have dropped done my next pattern drop i would like to use some of those funds to order a joining color and then i want to put these together <laughs> i want to put these together with the joining color so that we can have a massive blanket for us to snuggle under on the sofa. Because that's what our sofa's really missing, is some big oversized blankets that we can really get comfortable with. And I think this will be the one that I reach for. I think that's everything I wanted to cover.
I shared my cushions, I've shared Carter's blanket, I've spoken a little bit about my pattern drop. Did I tell you that Brad's booked the day off? Because with my first collection, when I did the launch, I tried to do it around Brad's working hours, so I kind of just launched it in the early hours of the morning without very much fanfare, and it felt like such an anti-climax and it like that I'd done a disservice to all the work that I'd done all the work that my testers had done and I kind of just dropped it and then that was it and I knew that I wanted it to be different for this one so he's actually booked the day off work so that he can have Teddy and I can just get up and focus on doing the last little bits making sure everything's ready to go I really want to do a YouTube live over I might do an Instagram live and I want to have like a big celebration. I want a big celebration for this pattern drop because it's important to celebrate these milestones. I'm self-employed so if I don't celebrate them there, there isn't going to be any, no one from up above like management hierarchy is not going to be like hey you did really well here's your £25 gift voucher like what I used to get in my corporate days, there's none of that. So I want to make it into a whole event. So I've got a few bits planned for the celebration. So I'm really, really excited about that actually. And it is my intention that every time I do a, a pattern drop that Brad would have the day off. So because of that, when I do pattern drops, it will be like multiple patterns rather than just getting one pattern done say I was going to release this one I don't know if I'm going to release these cushions or not I don't know I hadn't really got that far like if you're interested if you want the patterns I'm more than happy to do that but I'm going to collect up like five or six different patterns and release them even if they're not in a collection I'm just going to do that drop all at once because then it means that all that admin all of the pushing is done and then I can focus on the next lot and that's more sustainable for is because if I release one every month then Brad's going to need to take 12 days off just so I can release one pattern that's not going to work thank you for watching stay safe and Comment below with your question and answers on the bag subscription. Question and answers? Your questions that I will answer on the bag subscription. Stay safe and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.